it's so good to see you guys. I know, man. I mean, thank you so much. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for coming thank on the so podcast. Thank you so much. Anyway, shut up, shut up. Hold on, give me a second. <laughs> this is going well. You are here with us. This is going great. So, are you guys in Austin? Saving lives. Yeah, nope. yeah. So, so welcome. What do you? What? You good? We're good. High fives. High fives. This is the first time we're doing it this way. It's so different. Well, we'll be changing things. It's good to pivot in life. Here it's true. Is it's true. Vulnerable at home, which I don't know a better place to be vulnerable than at home. I guess you could say. Yeah. Um. I mean, we're literally all kind of post COVID. I remember when you came to do our show, the cooking show. The Christie's yeah. Kitchen throwback. It was, we were filming mocktails for New Year's Eve. Yes. We dressed up. It was very fun. And we had talked about, I think it was before COVID, correct? Like Yes, it was definitely. Before it was COVID. right before things got crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it the was, lockdown. It, it must have been it was, before the lockdown. It was, uh, I, but I, I had to have been... It had to have been – my concept of time – I don't know about you all, but my concept of time is was cr- screwed before COVID. But after, I'm like, <laughs> I, is it 93? <laughs> is it 2011? <laughs> I have no idea what year it is. Um, but it had to have been – because I had started at the hospital at that time, right? I was already working. No, you were just – no, you were just starting. You were just, yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, it had to have been before the lockdown because I started – then it was the de- January before the March of everything hitting the fan. So it was a little bit. Yeah, yeah it was December. So yeah, right I remember texting her and freaking out, even though we had just met, right? <laughs> I remember this. And I was like, Jennifer, <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a baby and I have another baby and this is happening. Please tell me. I was like begging her for information. I remember. About... And I even told Brennan, I was like, no, 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 I have a text out. It was like everyone was scrapping <laughs> to talk to somebody who might have like yeah, credible yeah. I got information, a, yeah. right? I got a lot of those texts from a lot of different people. <laughs> You're like, and still even now, I still, I still will get texts now of people being like, I, I went, I, I put on my perfume this morning and it didn't smell the same. What does that mean? And I'm like, I don't, <laughs> is it old? Like, I don't know. Like it. Like, so I still get that every now and then. Um, But yeah, I got that a lot from people. But it was tough because we were still figuring it out too. I mean, there was a lot of things that we did. I mean, it's, we're still mentally, I'm not going to like get into the whole like nitty gritty of it, but we're still like mentally reeling from all of it and will be for a while because. I mean, we can if you want to. We can't. No, and it's fine if you want to, but it's a whole rabbit hole. And it's something that I haven't fully processed, to be honest, because. Of course. I'm not able to. Um, right. And, and during, especially during all of that, I mean, we saw some really horrible things that I will never unsee and that changed me as a person. And we just had to go, you know, pronounce somebody in one room and then go to the next person in the next room. You know what I mean? So oh it, it just, we didn't have time. We didn't have time mm-hmm. to, to process any of that because we had to move on to the next person. And um, so it, it <laughs> so I, you know, it'll come out in ways. It, it's been a very interesting study in um, what happens when you don't process emotions, because now like I'll be watching TV and an IMS commercial will come on and all of a sudden I'll start crying. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Stupid so it's a, yeah, I'm like, the dog just wants to be good. Or like I'll watch like Project <laughs> Runway Junior and all of a sudden the 15 year old gets kicked off and I'm like, he's too young to know rejection or like whatever. Um, but that's like kid actor stuff too. But like, yeah, so yeah. I mean, triggered. It's, it's, oh, Lots totally. But like, it, yeah, but it, it's, it, it is interesting to see. It's a, It's been a big lesson as well in what happens when you don't. Because I, especially with acting and stuff, we're constantly processing emotions. We're constantly working. And rejection. That's, that's, and rejection. But even like on, when you get to do what you love, you're processing emotion. And so this job is totally the opposite of like, you can't process emotion. You have to process information and care and, and be the perfect person that has it all together, even when everything's falling apart. So it's been a big lesson that I'm still learning and still figuring out of, how to process emotion and still keep going 
and what that looks like. I don't know. Like I said, I don't have it figured out yet. It, it's something yeah. we're still all kind of reeling from, to be honest. But, but I remember, was, you know what? The texts you sent, I remember them being very much like, like, take a breath. I probably like, could find them on my phone. Young. Let me see if they're still there. Like, they were very comforting. Oh, so comforting. Okay. You know, I'm glad. And like, I'm glad. I just, it just made him immediately made me think like, whoever's got her under their care is in good hands. You know, like oh, you that have means a lot to me. Thank you. A very good tech side manner. Um, so well <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think, I think Jennifer, I think you bring up a really, wait a minute. Can I call you Jen? Yeah. No, most people call me Jen. I, it's weird. Okay. I introduce myself as Jennifer, but then all my friends call me Jen. I get that. It's not Jenny. 100%. I'm not Jenny. I get it. Not Jenny. Jenny has pom poms. I'm not Jenny. I've never had pom poms in my life. I can't jump. It's just, it's not, that's it. it's not me. That's You've like got when... scrubs and gloves. Like it's a whole different <laughs> yeah. thing. That's like, <laughs> that's like when people try to call me Chrissy and I'm like, that's not no. accurate. That's not me. But she sounds I don't cute end in... Chrissy sounds She sounds real cute. cute. But I always tell people I don't end in Y. <laughs> I don't end in Y. I'm sorry. It's just not me. <laughs> okay. So you did bring up a really excellent point, okay? Um, and obviously, we're here with Jennifer Stone on Vulnerable today. We um, just get into it. We get we don't into even it. Do the intro. I love honestly, it. we don't play by the rules. No. We don't stay in a studio. <laughs> we don't stay in one state. Independent podcast. What's up? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are that you 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 brought up a really cool point. Actually, was that you know your career path, or I should say, careers path career paths, mm -hmm. multiple careers. That was the point I was trying to make was yeah. is it, it's interesting how much of what emotionally you've experienced in the past has benefited you in your current state, in your current career path of being in the healthcare system and sort of providing care and not just any care. I mean, you're a nurse, you're actually speaking to people and that's a very, I mean, do you remember when COVID was happening and we were, everyone was saluting you and everyone was clapping and it's like, that's not there now, but, and we should go into that in a minute, but really what are you using from being a child actor as a nurse today? You know, I, it's interesting because I always, in my mind, they're very separate, but the interesting thing is, is they're, they're not at all because they... They've overlapped in ways I never expected them to. Uh, one of the biggest ones is empathy. I mean, you can't be a good actor and not be an empath. Like you just, you have to, even when you're playing a villain, you know, you have to find where they justify things, where it makes sense to them. Nobody operates in a sense of being evil as an example, right? As an actor. They don't think they're so, evil, right? They don't think they're evil, right? So you have to come from every character you approach, you approach with empathy and go, okay, right. where are they coming from? You know, how, you know, not sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work because sympathy, you know, you, it starts to become condescending. It becomes a whole right. thing. But empathy it's is loaded. different. Yeah. It's loaded. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a big one. And, and you have to approach every character and every patient the same way. You have to approach them with empathy. And it's been helpful because with acting and, and just, you know, having any kind of success as a kid, you know, you're exposed to a lot of different kinds of people. And that's been one of the biggest like eye opening things, too, about um, working in an ER, especially is you're exposed to just so like in a 12 hour shift, the vast amounts of people that I will meet from different walks of life. I will have I a homeless that. guy in one room and then I'll have the lead singer because I, you know, I work out weirdly enough. My hospitals, I think I told you this last time is right across from ABC Studios, which is another life weird thing totally um, weird <laughs> which is like so I see like Mickey on like the water tower every time when I go to work and I'm like what? that's bizarre yeah <laughs> I'm like that's to pick up your residuals go back yeah right yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so I so it, it is so yeah so we get a lot of like entertainment people there so like one room I'll have a homeless person and like the next room I'll have like the lead singer of whatever band or whatever actor right. or whatever so it, right, it, it, right. it's just interesting of seeing what separates people and also what more so what very much links them to be the same. And that's something that I think having that exposure to a lot of different people very young and having that exposure to so much empathy very young has been helpful as a crossover. Does that no, make something sense? That I, yeah, no, 100%. And you're, you're an ER nurse, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're in the ER, right? Okay. Yeah. Something that really inspires me about, about your paths is 
I honestly couldn't. I mean, I, I like to think about what I would have done if I hadn't been an actor. And I, I've were land- you gonna say that you thought you could be a nurse? No, you were terrible at taking care of me. <laughs> <laughs> you were the worst. My dad, my dad That's said the same thing about me. My dad, my dad, when I thought about going into nursing school, he goes, "You would be a horrible nurse." And I'm like, oh "Thanks a lot, Dad." First so like, of don't all. T- don't take that. Don't take that. I'm Thanks, just, Jennifer. I'm just I'm just <laughs> I just got my nails done. And they're super pointy. That's yeah. all I'm gonna they're say. They're really. Oh, oh, look out! Nice they're hands. Very cute. He taught me. Hey, ah. so. <laughs> On that one, but I still love you. And I am, I well, what I was trying to say is this. I feel like I could have been a teacher because I do think that I've always had sort of this like calling, okay, which is what I'm getting at, towards children. And I learned that it sort of was unlocked for me when Disney was like, so by the way, you're a role model for like millions of kids and they're all going to start looking up to you and running up to you and and watching every single thing that you do. Now, I'm not talking about the branding part that the kids all have now. Yeah, yeah. What I'm t- I'm talking about like the genuineness in those children's eyes when they see you and how much they identify with you and love you. And you just like I didn't even have younger siblings and people always thought of me as like the older sister type, which is ironic. But also I never wanted to disappoint those kids, right? Like yeah. so now that I'm a parent and my 20s and everything is long behind me, I'm observing that I probably could have done something in relation to kids and crafting and, you know, sort of patience and nurturing. I have that even if I approach, like, stuff as a director. Like, there's just a nurturing to me. I'm not saying I'm the, the sweetest mom. I'm definitely not. <laughs> well, you're great. Well, but also... I, I, but, but I have my limits, too. With all of that in mind, okay, and all of those career paths that you've had, it's like, what was your calling? Can you have more than one calling in life? I think so. I think so. I mean, I still, I still, my main passion, the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning, the thing that makes me feel the most like me is still acting. Like that Hmm. hasn't changed. Sorry, you're going to see cats just going behind me. No, this is awesome. Um, (laughs) You are. Like you got a tail over here. You got a butt (laughs) over here. Like that's just going to happen. I'm going to be talking about these serious life things and just cat (laughs) asses everywhere. And I just see this. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have it. Um, Just just taking it over. It's okay. Everyone. Um, So, but yeah, so I still, and I've known that since I was six years old. I was one of those like weird kids that like the moment I did it, something that just clicked that I was like, this is what I love to do. This makes me feel like me. Um, The thing was that what I didn't anticipate as a kid was the fact that the industry is so Hmm. narcissistic and (laughs) self-involved and that, yeah, right? So like that was an aspect that of course as a kid, like you're never going to anticipate. So as I got into adulthood, I was like, it's not... The art of it I love and it still makes me feel very much like myself and it and it and it invigorates me, but I've gotta get out. I've gotta have something where I'm it's not about me. I've gotta have something and I've always had this underlying interest on like human sciences and, and science in general and and you know, and then the diabetes diagnosis got thrown in there. And mm-hmm. so I was like, well, this is perfect because I was like, I wanna understand my body more. I want people to never have to go through, you know, negative healthcare experiences as much as I can help it. Um, and it allows me to, because I, I work three days a week, so it allows me to be able to audition and work on acting the other four and, you know, go to the hospital and do something that's not about me for three days. Granted, there's a lot of naps in between. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve How all of the shifts? naps. How long are those shifts? How long are your 12 shifts? Hours. They're 12 hours. Oh. Why did you ask the same question I just asked? <laughs> how long are the shifts? Hold on a second. How hold long on, are the on. shifts? Hold on, hold on. Did you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's because she's tuned me out. So she no, it's because we don't hear different. each other. <laughs> I can hear you right it's- here. <laughs> Listen, listen, I need to, we need to walk the Jennifer Stone path, if you will. Yeah. How did we get started? Sure. Like what, what, so you said you expressed interest in acting. six years old. Like super young. When did it, when did it really like become like, okay, that's it, I'm going for it. And were your parents supportive? How did that all work? My, so my mom, my mom was always really supportive. My dad, I'll, I'll be honest, he's a very practical man and he he loves me very much and he he just wants the best for me. And he just didn't have he didn't have the same like foresight. I don't know what it was cuz I mean, I'm not a I'm not a parent. I can't put myself in those shoes. Um and I'm not even going to try to um cuz I see kids and I'm like Ugh. like I don't know what to do with them. Every time I have pediatric <laughs> patients, I'm like 
Like they freak me out. Kids freak me you gotta out. You got to do like, the 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 happy hat dance that we did on my cooking. <laughs> show. Do that. They don't know what that is. They're like they want Paw yeah, Patrol. Right. They want stuff that I'm like I don't. Yeah, oh, the huh. kids. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have to start IVs and kids. It's weird. Like I'm just like it's oh. hard. Like yeah, it's kids freak yeah. me out. Um. Yeah. So um, they freak me I out can't... too when I have two of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's hey, but you're nailing it. You're doing great. Thanks. Um. But yeah, so I mean, with like my dad, my dad is a very practical man and he just didn't see it. And so he was not the most supportive early on. God bless my mother. She was supportive from day one because I I believe there were some things that she wanted to do as a kid and her parents were very practical and did not let her do. And she's always had that part of her that was just like what would have happened if I got to Mm. do those things. Um, And so I think because of that, she always with my brother and I just thought, well, whatever you want to do, as long as you put in the work and you want to do it and you're having a good time and whatever, I will support that. And so she did and went above and beyond with me and drove me out to California from like nine years old for like six months out of the year back and forth. And And where was home? And Texas. Come on. Texas. Yeah, she was here not too long ago. I tried to get her to come and visit us. That's right. I know. I know. I was only there for like a week though for Christmas. So I had to go to my dad's That's farm. Nice. So. Um, Aww. But yeah. So we had some redneck time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so my mom was really supportive. Um, and it was just something that I, it was, it was weird. It just, it was always, my mom's always implemented that it's not who I am. It's what I do. And so I've always had a clear differentiation between those two. But it's very healthy. Excuse me. It's very healthy. And she instilled that into me really early. But it's just always been like my catharsis. It's always been the thing how I express myself. Like even from a very young age, it's been something mm. that I have gotten things out with and like worked through things. It's been like more effective to me than ther- like any therapist I've ever gone to. You know what I mean? Like it's just really? something. Yeah. Like it, it, it's, it's very cathartic for me because I sure. find a you lot. You seem to have. Sorry, I was gonna say you seem no, to have no, a very no. healthy relationship with it. Yeah, so, so that's, maybe that's positive. Why you get catharsis. So wait, so so when you say that your mom was talking to your brother as well about sort of achieving things and and, and not sort of leaving them, what, what what was he doing that she kind of promoted him to do? Was it acting? Well, as well? he he was he was how I got into acting because he was like addicted to video games, and my mom said one summer like you're not gonna play video games all summer. So uh-huh. he like found this like theater camp and I was the little sister that got dragged to theater camp. And so that he, I got into it because of him. And then over the years, yeah, he like just lost interest and wasn't really into it. Um, yeah. He was always he really now? into, he's a history teacher. Okay. Yeah. So he was always really into history. And so my mom and dad really helped like and promoted him like whatever history books or whatever, like, you know vacations to like historical sites or museums or you know whatever they wanted him to be able to go to those things and do those things um and so yeah because history has always been his thing um yeah we went to uh europe once um and all of like the going to like the beaches of normandy he was just like salivating you know like we always warn people we're like don't talk about world war ii with chris because you won't stop talking about world war ii like it's (laughs) he's one of those like if you want to talk about it for the whole time you're here great but like it's like it's like getting into a conversation with a crypto bro like you know what i mean totally (laughs) it's the same yeah yeah Uh, what's the age difference between you guys uh it's five years he's five years older yeah so this is interesting to me. And also, I want to say kudos to your mom and your dad, even just for kind of not standing in the way, um, because that can happen. And then there can be such a displacement in the family that that I do find that that's actually kind of something that has happened to me. And it's all a chronic problem, too. Like, it, it happened even worse over time, where the siblings mm-hmm. kind of didn't have enough time together Um and then eventually we kind of just like drifted apart kind of thing. And it's so it's 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 a real it's a real hard thing to live with. And I've I've been seeing it the more I'm talking about just, you know, the 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 paths and the genesis, the different people. We've had Alison Stoner on and Who it's I interesting. Love. I know. And she's one of the she's most the positive best. people in the world. Yeah. And of course, her experiences was very different. And I feel like with movement, I feel like Allison touches into something that you were talking about where you're like, it's my catharsis to act 
Whereas with her, I think it's to move. Um, and, and, and for your brother, it's to talk about World War II, you know? And so, <laughs> I mean, what, what, would, what would you say to people like us parents who have these little girls that we would really only want them to have the best experience even starting in anything media related like Mm. should we we've talked about it and been like oh should we wait for them to come to us and be like this is what we want but I mean this is a this is a you're a great example of somebody who really it's giving them life to do this whether they have rejection or not and also has a balance of perspective yeah I'd love to hear your thoughts on that should we get our kids in the biz (laughs) (laughs) I'm to be perfectly honest because I've thought about that a lot too I think it's inevitable anybody that was a kid actor. I think that's a thought that's inevitably going to come in their mind of like, if I ever had kids, would they, would I put them in this? And I think, excuse me, the best thing that my mom ever did was she let me drive the, the train, so to speak. So it was never about her. She's still to this day, like I'm almost 30 and she's still to this day is like, are, are you sure you don't want to just quit. It, it's a really crappy business. Like, you know, and when I was a kid, she was like, are you sure you don't want to just quit? We can go home and you can play soccer. And like, it's yeah. fine. Like, so yeah. it was never, it was cause I was around and I'm sure you were too around so many kids that like, they were going to be the breadwinner. They were living vicariously through their kid. And, yeah. and those were the ones where you just really see them get screwed up because it's just not a yeah. natural dynamic. And so right. what I applaud my mom for doing is the fact that she really paid attention to what I was interested in what my brother was interested in and then did what she let us kind of lead where we wanted to go and then helped us go there. She was was your advocate. She was my advocate. She She never, she never put thoughts into my head and she even like, like auditions, like I had, (laughs) I was a very confident kid um, to a fault sometimes where like I, before I had any right to be like, Oh, I'm going to pick my parts. I like in my head, I, was like, oh, well, this is beneath me, which was stupid. I was like seven. Um, <laughs> and like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had no right to think that way. But for some that's reason, amazing. I did. Yeah, you which actually was great. did have. That's awesome. I'm never well, saying I mean, Zoinks. whatever. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, well, and it's, it's so funny because I used to like, even with Disney Channel, because like I, in my head was like, I'm a dramatic theater actor. I came from theater. So like, even like, I remember a few Disney Channel auditions when I was like younger, like maybe like 10 or something where I would get so upset because I'm like, this is so cheesy. I don't want to do this. Like, you know what I mean? Just having such yeah. like an ego about you get it. get in your head about it. Yeah. Totally. That's and then I had an acting coach that helped me like change my perspective on what it was, which was really helpful. But she would like get on to me. I can tell you what that is in a second, but yeah. she, she would get on to me. Cause like, she would say, she's like, look, you know, I've made a lot of sacrifices being away from your brother and your dad to be here for you. All I'm asking is that you do your best. If you're not going to memorize mm. your lines, that's fine. You don't have to, if you don't want to go out on this audition, that's fine. But we're going to quit because it's, it's, you know, you can't pick and choose. It's, it's not a, it's, it's not a, oh, today I want to do my best tomorrow. I don't, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it a hundred percent. And I, you know, and I appreciate that because even like, cause you know, I mean, you do like some, like some of the cheesy movies you do and things like that, you know, yeah. some people show up and they phone it in and that instilled in me this thing of like, if I'm going to show up, I'm going to do it a hundred percent. I'm never going to come and be there and be like, oh, this is a paycheck or, oh, this is whatever. It's like, no, people are showing up. It's a job for people. You know what I mean? And some people may phone yeah. it in. I'm not responsible for that, but people are making sacrifices to be here. And so if right. I'm going to be here, I'm going to give what I'm, my a hundred percent for today. And That's so that was a really helpful like thing. Um, so she kept me accountable as well as being supportive. It wasn't just like a, you're great. Let's go kind of thing. That was your mom, right? I just want to make sure mm-hmm. you're not talking yeah, about the acting teacher. Okay. No, yeah. no. My acting teacher just gave me a great like perspective on, on genre versus character and, and how just really irrelevant that is ultimately. Oh, I'm so um, curious. I think yeah, I wrote a so paper she, about that. <laughs> Did you? Oh, I want to hear about this paper. Um, oh, I don't I'm remember a bit, it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a useless um, anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really great story. Tell it again. Um, no, so she told me because I remember I, I came to her and I had this, and I, I God bless her for doing this. She's a great acting uh, teacher, but I came to her with this like Disney audition, and I had such yeah. an attitude about it, and I was like, this, I just I don't want to do this. Like it's so cheesy and it's so formulaic and blah 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 blah. And she's like, you know, Jen, she's like, 
maybe you don't want to do it because you're afraid of it because it's not something you're comfortable doing and you should embrace the challenge of it. Because she's like, hmm. the challenge is going, this is an over-the-top person, but how do I make it real? How do I make this over-the-top character grounded in reality and make it something that people can relate to? And she's mm-hmm. like, get over your BS, get over your attitude, you know, and, she, and find the challenge in it. Find the challenge. And, and that was something that just totally – and that was when I actually started, you know, I booked with Disney, started working with them and everything because I started to see it as a challenge of going, how do I take this over-the-top, you know, um, like, n- like not – grounded in reality character and make it something Mm -hmm. grounded in reality that i think a lot of people have that kind of thought process where they're trying to square up like pretension and practicality like for example Mm -hmm. like you know i went to i went to columbia then i went to afi for my master's and at afi like no one writes a comedy you know what i mean like nobody makes a comedy when you're at afi like everything has to be like some insanely dramatic story and i fell into the groove of that so and like the ego just got so swollen mm-hmm. like while you're there because you're like i'm at the best film school in the world blah 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 and then i think about like you know maybe two three years went by and i'm like well nothing's selling <laughs> like you know what i mean and maybe people go to the movies to be entertained and like although i have this specific you know stuff that i may like more than let's say a, like a disney channel show or something everything serves a different demo Right. There are people that Mm -hmm. get value out of different shows, you know, like Christy before she before she was on Even Stevens. And I mean, she was she was doing Broadway. She was in Woody Allen movie. I mean, now Woody Allen's persona non grata. But like but she was on the indie New York actor path as a kid. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and then ended up going Disney. And like I've thought about it before, like, I wonder what would have happened to Christy if she would have been there. It's like, well, not as many people might know who Christy is today. Maybe it wouldn't have presented all these opportunities. and. Like lessons. I would have been a teacher. I would have been a teacher. You would have been a teacher. <laughs> but like, I think it's pretty, that's pretty like wise for a kid is my point behind all of this. Like at such a young age to embrace that because I was definitely, even like when I was younger, my taste in music and everything, I think you're just so thick headed and think you know so much when you're young. It usually takes years for people to get there. So that's pretty impressive that you had somebody who can get through to you mm, at, at that age. Like really good parenting and teaching. Yeah, I, I was of, lucky. I had a good. I had a lot of good influences, and I was very fortunate in that. Well, and, and you I, took I see the some, advice. More important. Well, I, I mean, there were a lot of times I didn't that I'm not talking sure. about. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a straight yeah, path, right? No, not at all. Um, there were many times I'm surprised as a teenager my mom didn't leave me by the side of the road. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I would have. I was like, God, I was a piece of trash when I was a teenager. It was just oh, such, such an attitude. No, not, I mean, oh, you know yeah, what I mean, so though. Like, you just yeah, yeah. Too. I know every teenager yeah, is like, a piece of trash. That's true. Teen- yeah. yeah, like they're just all like just just know it all. Like, yeah, I've I've had teenage patients that literally will tell me stuff that I'm like, just shut up and sit still. Like, <laughs> like yeah, like it, it, they're just like yeah, they're just little like they're the worst because uh, they think yeah. they know everything and they know nothing. Um, yeah, they start telling you about life and you're like, you're brand new. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> but um, but you do when you're at that. There's this weird ego that comes with being a teenager. So I was I, I don't know why that was the stuff that seeped in, but for I'm grateful that it was. Maybe by the grace of God, I don't know. But like, mm-hmm. but for whatever reason, it that sunk in. But you make a great point about how, for whatever reason, there's this like stigma about like, oh, great art has to be serious. And and but if you think about it, and you like, it's always been this battle between art and commerce, right? Ever since like yep. the beginning of of show business back in like the you know, 1910s, 1920s, um, and it's always been that struggle. And the interesting thing is, is if you look at like the movies that are nominated for Oscars, right? How many times have you gone? I, I heard somebody else said this once. They said, how many times have you gone back and rewatched The Artist? Never. Never. Right? Like you saw it the yeah. one time and it was like, oh, I great. Or like, watch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I get, or, like, I or, or, or like The Father with Anthony Hopkins. Beautiful movie. Yeah. It's not a movie you're going to go back when you have a crappy day because it's just going to make right. you feel crappier. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And so it's it's this thing of quite, of like what you, that point that you got to too, of taking a step back and going, okay, I'm doing this as a catharsis or an expression or for validation or whatever reason people are do it for. I know too many people that do it for validation, but which is just a black hole of well, we do need despair. to go on, actually, but go yeah, on. we do because like the whole the, you have to let go of that real fast. But um, yeah. but or at least in my opinion, but um, 
for whatever reason you're doing it, you also have to like ask yourself what people are getting from it. And, and, you know, a lot of times it's just joy or escapism. And, and that's something, something that's so great about Disney channel or what's so great about comedies or, you know, or even horror movies. Like you ask about like a selling or not asking, but talking about like selling a project, like horror movies are so easy to sell because they're cheaper and, and people love them because they're an absolute escape. You know, and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there's there's merit in that. It doesn't always have to be gloom, despair, and everyone dying and having Alzheimer's. You know. Well, and also yeah. legacy. <laughs> Sorry, okay. I, I would AFI, rarely have any AFI short film ever made. I had a sick exactly. sense of humor before nursing, and nursing has just ruined me. <laughs> oh, like my let's sense go. of humor we'll go, is We'll go tip for tat over here. Beautiful. Wait, let's do you guys go. have any jokes you can? First, tell? first of all, you're drinking a 100 gallon. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's what? the biggest. It's, it's, I can kill a man at this one. It's huge. It's a that giant is, water bottle she's is, drinking that from. That is, yes. That and, could. Um, I, I got to say, I will even take your advice more now that you actually do stay hydrated. Yeah. That, she knows, that, she, that, she's, <laughs> you know your shit. It's, this is great. A water bottle and a weapon. Like, it's great. There you yes. go. Um, it's, I, I, need to, I need to, I've been looking bad. online for less abrasive water bottles because it's a very no, aggressive like water no, bottle. No, I like it. Go in strong. I'm Usually not. the see-through ones I feel like are a lot less like, you know, the, the ones where they have the little lines on it and they say, keep going. What oh, the hell is that? I was just you about to say I ones? hate those so much because I what? find them so... The sound of I hate it them. alone I hate made them hate so it. much. Do you know how many times I find a water bottle online? Like I've been, it's been like a month long thing that I've been like looking for a water bottle and I find so, yeah. like, and it, this is stupid and like adulthood that you're like, I've been looking for the perfect water bottle for a month no it, it's um, the real it's but the way um but and i'll see one i'm like this one's great and then on the freaking back it has 8 a.m you got this 10 a.m oh, no. let's go and i'm like get the hell out of here you condescending ghostwriter like god like <laughs> shut up like i hate it so much me too it's like the I live laugh love him. of water bottles i hate oh, it oh have you ever I, seen the <laughs> breakdown of the live laugh love there's a TikTok. Oh my God. It's Which, amazing. by the way, Jennifer, you're on TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You love your TikTok. I think oh, you were on TikTok you. before I was. Yeah. I was, OG, and then I was OG. like, okay, if I'm going to do, again, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to yeah. do it 100%. So I've like been trying yes. to like actually commit to it rather than just being like, I don't know what this is, which is I wanted how to I make, started. <laughs> I wanted to make a fake Instagram account that was like bullshit motivation. Where I was like telling people to do all this stupid and terrible shit. Like, I'm like, this would be so great. Yeah, yeah. Just be like, don't worry, you got this. No, you don't. You're a fucking idiot (laughs) for listening to this guy. Just like, come on. It's just so ridiculous. Oh my God. I didn't get a job once because this director um, gave the feedback that I was rude and disrespectful because I cut him off when he was giving me like direction, which I was like, well, blessing in disguise. I don't have to work with whatever that that is. Was it over Zoom? No, this was years ago. Oh. This was like when I was like <laughs> set 16 maybe, um, okay. which I'm like, it was also a 16 year old, like get over yourself. But, um, but <laughs> I didn't even realize I cut people off until that point because in my family, we're so just like, that we, we like most, <laughs> yeah, that if you don't cut people off, you don't speak. You're just like mute in the corner. So like, it's yeah. so <laughs> hard for me to not like talk that way because that's just how I've always been like raised to communicate. So I it's something that I am working on, but here. it's hard. Oh, no, no please don't work here. on it. Please don't work on it. That sounds awesome to be able to now know that she's okay with this. There's nothing worse than I someone the sitting there patiently and going like this. Uh-huh. Yeah, And, like, no. they let the dead air seep the entire, in. I'm like, oh, fuck, no, we no, got to no. fill it with something. Brandon, you People know have that done that's that? not true. No, wait. Oh, yeah. So when Brendan and I met, admittedly, okay, when talking about being triggered and whatnot, okay. What the fuck is that? No, wait. Hold on. Let me. Did you stop? I will oh, say, like, so, as a bystander here, and when Brendan and I met, talking about being triggered was a terrible, like, two things to put together in a sentence. <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying is, is that he helped me through something, because I'm the oh, youngest in the Sicilian okay. family, and nobody <laughs> listened worried. to me, to the point where I had no opinion whatsoever, okay. and so when he met me, I would get super weird and awkward in conversations oh with people. God. So when you talk about, but I loved you through it. Yeah, all. yeah, yeah. So he, so he was the first person to really tell me who I was, t- without me really like understanding it. And he did it in a very like direct way, but he did it with love. And like yeah. I was offended at first because you know coming from LA, 
I was like, where, it, wh- why does this feel like <laughs> feedback that I'm getting from an audition? Like, why is he telling yeah, yeah. me like, you know, when you're in front of this person, you really shouldn't laugh hysterically like you're in some, you know, LSD like trip or something. <laughs> and it's just because I didn't like dead air. It's because yeah, I didn't yeah. like dead air. So I found it ironic that you're saying that it's nothing worse well, than somebody it, listening. What I've it learned. was is that it's not just that with your family. It's that it's like a cacophony of non sequiturs that builds to nothing. Oh, and also so, like, most times a fight. That's one of my most favorite times, words, by the way. Yeah. So well done. Non sequitur. Oh, no. I love it. Oh, oh cacophony. cacophony. It's just I like, love brrr, and it's rapid fire getting, but but not in like a pleasurable way. No offense to your family who might be listening. I don't think you ever got to get your your point across, your point of view. So you'd be like, right. well, if I shout it from the rooftops, like I'll just shout any word, lamp. And it's like, well, that didn't fit into the conversation, but okay, you're here. Like, you know, like, yeah, but now you're you're better now. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Crazy Italian family. <laughs> you were here. never bad, by the way. You know that you ever like you ever had a chance to get a word in edgewise. Yes, like like she's saying, like you just never. No, but it. but what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you do. You know, but you do. I, hearing you say that is actually really refreshing because it, it's there is, and it, it's also refreshing too because. I, I don't think it is something that's talked about a lot of like this kind of like growing up this thing feeling okay to be heard, but also finding this balance of being okay to be still and be silent because there does seem to be this like either or thing of like, you're either the life of the party, you're always heard by everybody and you're just like shouting lamp from the rooftop or you're sitting in the corner and you're kind of the wallflower, right? Like there's not really, there seem to be these two like stereotypes, right? And I think that there's a place, like, especially, I mean, for human beings in general, but I I do think, I mean, I can only speak from my experience. I've I've never been a man, but like, as a woman, you know, there is a lot about being heard and also feeling okay being silent and still and finding peace and calm in that too. And finding the balance between the two, you know, because I do- And speaking of balance, like, how do you- Let her finish one real quick. because she- Sorry. No, 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 I was wrapping it. No, I was wrapping up anyway just about how, you know, the fact that it's okay to be both. You know what I mean? Because I I, I felt that too, that kind of pressure to either be one or the other in my life. And of either like, oh, I have to be like quiet and demure or I have to be loud and I have to get my point across and I have to be heard and, and whatever. And I think that it's okay to be both at different times. You know what I mean? But, yep. you know, obviously like – and, and finding that that – place of like okay if I do have something that I a point I really want to make it's okay to be assertive but not aggressive you know what I mean mm-hmm, so it's like there's there, mm-hmm, there's a, yeah. I don't know if I'm making that exactly as clear as I know that's to, totally but clear. like it's it is an interesting conversation about balance and, and presence and, and being heard and also to the point of what we were talking about with teenagers feeling so moody because they have this mm-hmm. thing going around on TikTok called main character energy where mm-hmm. like you know they generally the Gen Z generation wants to feel heard. They feel very unheard. Um, You know, uh, uh, the climate change crisis for them is very real. So much of their life is about branding and being the main character and, you know, figuring out art and commerce, like what we've been talking about throughout. And it's like, they are struggling very much with that balance. And so somebody who has so much perspective and so many different career paths, um, some would even say are completely the opposite of one another, So how do you, you know, how do you decompress from taking on so many different burdens? I mean, how do you, besides the acting, and we know that's cathartic, but what is, what does a vacation look like for you? Yeah. How do you let stuff in the ER go? uh, You know, that's an excellent question. And I don't exactly have an answer for you yet Um, because it's something that I, I, I felt like I had a pretty good solid feel on like how I process things and how I worked through things before I started nursing and like before the pandemic. And then a lot of that went away because during the pandemic, either because it wasn't available. Um, so like things that I could go out and do, you couldn't go out anymore and do them. Right. Or, you know, you couldn't see people that, you know, were really healing presences or what have you. Or, um, And then also to like things I would do like drawing or writing or reading or I didn't have the energy to do. Like literally I'd come home and I'd just like pass out. Because also I went from, I I switched to day shift, but I was working night shift when I started. So like my days off, I was like re-flipping like my days and nights. And so it was like uh, shooting a night shoot. 
Totally. Absolutely. And which I'd done before, but you know, there it's very different. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but like it's, yeah, it's something that I'm still working on to be perfectly honest. I'm still working on how I process things, which is why I'm still crying at project runway junior. Um, but like, (laughs) it's something that I'm, I'm figuring out how to go because for two years, I was just talking to a friend of mine about this exact thing, actually, because for two plus years, I got so used to being like, I got to push that down and then I'll, I'll get to it later because I can't, I cannot right now. I'm not able to. Um, now the, the challenge I'm having, and, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if other healthcare workers have had the same thing, but I'm having a hard time now stopping and going, okay, what do you feel right now? What are you going through right now? What Mm -hmm. do you need right now? So I'm having a hard time kind of tapping back in to what I need and what I'm feeling because for so long I was going, you're fine. You're fine. It's fine. Just put it away and you'll get, you'll get to it later. You'll get to it that later and that'll be fine and not getting it out in any way. So to be perfectly honest, I'm still unpacking that. Okay. So yeah, I'm still what figuring I'm, that out. My mom's coming you. in town. We're going to Joshua Tree. That's the vacation I'm taking soon. Yay, great. Oh, but like as far as like awesome. long-term unpacking things, you know, I'm still yeah. figuring that part out. That's good. So you're a little numb to it right now. I mean, is there anything that a little people bit. are uh, – But is there anything that people are doing in the actual hospitals? Are they doing meetups? Are they doing healing, like meditations together? Like is there anything that you might suggest no. to the, the healthcare community? I mean, where are your advocates, you know? <laughs> that's a great question. Where do the um, healthcare advocates advocate? You know, and that's and that's been something that has been an unfortunate byproduct of working in healthcare. Is you see a lot of the flaws. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, there's a lot that goes on that is not okay, um, and I, I, there, there aren't a lot of advocates, especially for like mental health. Um, yeah, I, I remember like in the midst of the pandemic, you know. I got, well, if you want like one free healthcare session, you can get one and then they'll start taking it out of your paycheck. And it was just like, well, okay. And, and it was like right next to like HR and like, it just was not great. (laughs) Like it just wasn't right. So a a lot of my coworkers have been struggling with the same thing of figuring out because, because I mean, we have like unions, some hospitalized hospitals are unionized and mine is as well, but there's limits there. You know what I mean? It's like with SAG after, right? The, there's limits there. There's things that you would love for them to, to monitor and to have, you know, barriers on. I was talking to a, a friend of mine about like how like self tapes, like how they have all these parameters now of like, okay, tomorrow I need 17 pages. And it's like, no, like that's not, mm-hmm. you can't, mm-hmm. you can't do that, <laughs> but there's yeah, no yeah. parameter on it right now. And right. so like, that's something. Can we, too, tell, like, can we just tell the audience what you mean by that? I don't, I don't know if they'll know exactly. Oh yeah. yeah though, thank you. Thank you for, sure. um, so like with self tapes, uh, just, you know, for those that don't know, like, so they'll have an audition and especially since the pandemic, those have become way more popular. Um, so instead of going to a casting office, you'll put yourself on tape doing the audition with like two scenes, um, and a reader. Um, to basically give them the idea of the audition. But some of the challenges of that is because there's no like parameters of like, okay, you can only do 10 pages. There has to be a 48 hour turnaround of like the tape is due in 48 hours. They can give you any number of pages, any amount of dialogue, and it can be due tomorrow or in six hours or, you know what I mean? Like I'm being, you know, I mean, tomorrow is not dramatic, but like personal life. Totally. I mean, I had to, I had to, I had to, I, I got home from three shifts in a row and one was a really tough shift. And um, I, <laughs> and, my, and I was excited about them, but my manager texted me and she's like, you've got these two great auditions. And I got them. And one of them was like 10 pages and they were both due like boom, boom, back to back. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and I worked the two days that they were due. So I had to get them done. Like one of them I had to get done the next day and then the one the day after. So I really had a day and two days to work on them. Like two totally different characters. One was 10 pages. The other one, um, I think it was like five or six. And there was like monologue, monologue, monologue. Like it was just, uh, and I literally just like, I, I just sat and I was just like, I'm gonna have a quick cry after my shift. And then I'm going to start memorizing these lines. <laughs> like, oh, um, And so, but that's the thing is, it's just like, you know, I know I'm not the only one that's working. Like, you know, actors have to bartend, they have to wait tables and that kind of thing. So 
But yeah. so just like, you know, unions in any capacity have their limits of what they can do. It's it's the same thing there. So there's not as much as there should be as far as taking care of healthcare providers in a lot of different areas, to be honest. I'm going to interject real quick. While they do, do work at, at, and they bartend and, and, you know, they wait tables, they're not facing down death. Uh, the most stakes of the are time. very high. So, yeah, the so, stakes are very different. Yeah. So I think like and working the kind of shifts you're working uh, still – you know, credence and give them credit for what they're doing. But well, like, the service industry has been through a lot, and is, especially and the it people is tough, but. who rely on the service industry as their main go-to, like, employment, which actors definitely were leaning on the service industry for, for decades and decades here. And now if they couldn't do that, I'm sure that they were suffering. That's a good point, too. But what yeah, I was going to ask. Very different, very different stakes. I, yes and no. I, my joke is that it, nursing, I mean, there are a lot of parallels. The, nursing is kind of the service industry with bodily fluids. That's my, like, ongoing joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to have, I imagine, well a pretty thick skin to be able to do it. Um, I, I guess I could somewhat relate it to my time in the Marines. Like, you definitely had to be. Yeah. You had to just turn stuff off, right? And then you, mm -hmm. unfortunately... At least in my experience, you to come that does come up. It brews gets to the top, right? At some point, you got to deal with it. So the cry before the audition, probably good. Um, but what I was yeah. going to say <laughs> is, how does your how does your how do your reps, right, your representatives, your manager, agent, etc., how do they feel about what you do? And like, are they pretty supportive of your nursing career? There, yeah, I, I have. I've had reps in the past that haven't gotten it. Um, Especially because, like, I, because I, like, I had to take time off, like, with, like, my diabetes diagnosis and trying to figure that over the four years that took and then time to go to nursing school. And so, of course, there were reps that, like, we don't get what you're doing, which is fine. Um, it's, a lot of people don't. I still have people all the time. They're like, she quit acting to go to nursing, to become a nurse. And I'm like, no, I didn't. But thank you. <laughs> you know? Um, but it, it, it's, my manager that I have now is, God bless her. She's very, very supportive. And she gets the fact that, like, I need to do both. And and she respects that. Like, I just had an audition that they wanted the 24-hour turnaround. And, you know, and, of course, she tries to make a work of, like, is there any way that you can possibly get this in? And I just said to her, I was like, look, I'm not going to send out a crappy tape. I'm not going to send out a crappy audition. Like, yeah, sure, I could go home after working 12 hours, throw some makeup on, cold read this. And it's going to look like crap. And I don't want to do mm -hmm. that. You know, I would rather not mm -hmm. send in an audition and not leave any impression than send in an audition and leave a bad impression. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so like, like, so she's understanding when it comes to that kind of thing, which I really appreciate. And it's hugely helpful of trying to balance both. And I don't think it would be possible without, you know, a representation that got that. And I, I know I'm lucky to have that. Have you had representation that hasn't gotten that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So how did you yeah. set your boundaries? Like, did you, did you feel like you were able to, cause I feel like there's so much, and I don't know if you can speak to this fear in mm -hmm. our side of the industry. There's so much fear to like leave LA. There's so much fear to like speak up for oneself and be their own advocate. And then mm -hmm. of course that affects all ages and races and genders and everybody, I feel like it's a blind kind of fear that mm -hmm. people have in the industry because if they speak up for themselves or have any kind of point of view that might cause production more time or whatever, even, even not even while working, but even in the casting process, yeah. if there's any deviation you're considered, you know, you're considered an issue. And um, I guess while some people can be a little tasteless in, in sort of setting their boundaries in a way that's sort of disrespectful to others, um, I think that it, it, it gets, a lot gets buried under the rug. And then I think there's this culture of fear so that people, like what we were just talking about, they don't even want to interject in a room full of people talking. They kind of just like, they stop having the opinion. And for a lot mm -hmm. of people, I would say myself included, once you stop speaking up or even trying to think of having sort of a narrative about something, it just, your, your, your passion for a lot of it dies. It dies away. Mm -hmm. So what are you asking her? Um, basically, 
Why am I asking her? <laughs> no, I, I, I. You're talking about. You're talking about. You're, 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 you're asking her. No, 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 no. So basically, what I'm saying is, is like, in my experience, it's been very hard to find a way to sort of stand up to the industry at large. But what I'm specifically talking about is the casting structure, the auditioning process, the agents, the managers. If you have your own opinion about things, they're not, they, they, they kind of label you as sort of like yeah, high maintenance. Difficult. And so here and you are. And if you're a girl, you're a bitch. Yes. Yeah. You know? And, and, so and, dumb. and then you just don't get the auditions. So what mm-hmm. I love about this is that you are getting the auditions and you're still actively because there's a lot of people who don't even get those calls, you know? Yeah. So I, what I think you're asking me is about like how I approach, cause it is an inter- And I felt that I felt that. And I've been the person who doesn't speak up in the corner and forgets what my voice sounds like. Um, because you're right after so long of not speaking up and being afraid to not be, not please, not be the people pleaser who's totally pleasant. Everybody loves on set and it's just so great to work with. So they'll ask you back. Right. Um, right. you know, you get tired of that and you're like, I don't even know. Am I even myself on set anymore? Like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I've definitely been that person to the person where I just mm-hmm. smile until my cheeks hurt in the corner and yeah. it's BS. Right. And yeah, yeah. And, and I've been the person that's afraid to be honest about like, look, I've, I'm going through this in my life. I can't give, I can't jump, hop, and skip at this point because it is an industry that wants you to jump, hop, and skip all the time. And if you're not going to, someone else will. And, and it's something that I, like, like with my diabetes, I didn't tell people for the longest time because I was horrified that they were going to find it to be something that could delay schedule, like shooting or be a problem yeah, or you know what horrible. I mean like it's yeah yeah well but and it was it was when I was being diagnosed it was hard because like I was still going through a lot of the symptoms that now I don't have but at the time I did and didn't know if I was going to have forever and it you know I would get stuff like well she doesn't look connected in the room and I think I told you this when I saw you uh for the Christie's kitchen of like yeah, because I couldn't, like, I lost my eyesight. Like, yeah, of course I wasn't connecting yeah. in the room because I couldn't see you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I was doing That's my so best rough. to, like, fix my eyes where they were supposed to be. But, oh like, I didn't, gosh. couldn't, like, your face looked blurry to me. You know what I mean? Right, So it was right, stuff right. like that, you know, um, that I was afraid to seem like, oh, like, oh, I'm so sorry you're going through that, but we've gone another way kind of thing. Where, like, it's all that tiptoe around the tulips nonsense. Right. But I reached a point where I just was like, you know, I'm so sick of – being everything for everybody and nothing for myself that I got to the point that I was like, you know, I will give it my all when I'm able to give it my all. But if I can't, I'm going to say so. And I'm going to say, look, I am not in a great place. I am not in a spot where this is going to be my best for today. And so I'm, I can't like with that audition Mm -hmm. the other day, I was like, I can't. If there was a way that I could and give you my best, I would, but I can't. It's in the middle of Do two you? shifts. There's, it's not possible. You know? right. And so that's the thing. I've gotten a lot better about saying no and saying no tactfully, right. not being like, no, I can't believe that they would want to do a turnaround like this. Like, I, not like, like that, just being like, look, can't, like, I'll, I'll be, I'm, I'm very big on like, can I get an extension? Right. If I have an audition that's due this day, because how many times have you had an audition that is due tomorrow and mm. all of a sudden your friend is auditioning for it next week? Yes, and you're exactly. like, why did I kill myself to get it done in 24 right. hours and they're still doing it next week? So I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan of being like, hey, is there any way I can get it to them? Like it, the first day I can possibly do it to my best ability. Um, mm-hmm. And if they say no, they say no. And I have to, and I've gotten mm-hmm. to the point where I'm okay with that. It's not my project. It wasn't meant to be. That's okay. And I let it go. And, and it's been so would a you lot say, healthier. Would you say that your diabetes diagnosis was – one of the most impactful growth moments that you've had. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was a catalyst of a lot of things. Um, I don't think it, the, the diabetes itself was something that was a catalyst for a lot of things. I mean, I growth in the sense of like taking care of myself and having to prioritize mm-hmm. myself physically and like in and, and, and my health uh, was its biggest thing. But as far as stepping outside of myself, having perspective, And then uh, leading me to nursing and having that be a whole, you know, different thing has been, it was life-changing. It was very, very life-changing. So wait, I don't know if we ever really talked into, so you got the diabetes uh, diagnosis. You you probably struggled with that for a bit and you were still Mm -hmm. working with Disney and whatnot. But then 
How did you decide? Did you just wake up and say, I'm going to go to school for this or? For nursing? Well, yeah, I got diagnosed nursing. after Disney actually. Um, okay. Which oh. is interesting because like I, I was, <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty, right? So like when I was working mm-hmm. in Wizards, I was always like, it was a joke of like, let's take a picture of Jennifer sleeping on this prop, this prop, this set, whatever. Like I was always asleep on, on something, which mm-hmm. now I'm like, oh, it's because my blood sugars were really high. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was just was like conked out like after Thanksgiving. Um, yeah. But uh, no, so I was diagnosed when I was 20 and the show ended mm-hmm. when I was 18. So oh. I was at the point where I was like, okay, I'm ready to do like be an adult, like go out of that. Like in my mind, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. In my mind, I like was like, cool, I did my Disney Channel show. I'm going to go do my freeform show. Then I'll have my ABC show. Like it had no clue how I was <laughs> talking path, about. The you path. Know? The yeah. path. The Disney <laughs> path. Like, like just yeah. such nonsense. You know what I mean? Right, like, right, right. I don't know what I was thinking. But – and then God was like, mm pump the brakes. Absolutely not. Um, so, yeah, when I was 20, I, I started losing my eyesight, getting really tired, like going to the grocery store would like wipe me out. Um, I gained like 60 pounds in two months. Um, So my back and my knees like got blown out. I still have issues Mm -hmm. like with my knees and like my like, yeah, I still have stuff that's like residual from putting that much weight on that fast. Um, Which again, talking about like the fear in the industry, like you can't be that big. You know what I mean? Like I struggled with eating disorders when I was a kid and like having Mm -hmm. like agents when I was like 13, like, hey, this is how you do a push up, like visiting them in the office because that was their... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, but that was their way of saying, like, hey, you need to lose weight. Like, yeah, of course. Yeah, you like, know, I, I wrote, but you knew what you it know meant. That I knew language. what it meant. Like, yeah. at 13, at 13, when I, and I had eating disorder shit, like, when I, excuse my French, when I was, like, 11, 12. And so, when I was 13, like, I was trying really hard to come out of that. Um, and I remember, I will never, it was the most absurd thing I've ever seen a grown woman do in my entire life. And that was another thing that it came from another woman that I was like, this industry is so screwed up. Yeah. Um, she got down in a pencil skirt, a blazer and heels oh, on God. the floor. It was the oh. most absurd. I literally, it took me a second, like being like, what the hell is she doing? Um, but yeah, she got down on the floor in her office and was like, have you ever, the, I, I'm doing these new pushups. They're great. And like starts doing these like pushups in her thing. And I just was like, <laughs> it took me like, I literally, I looked at her, my mom and like looked at her and I was just like, I don't understand what's happening right now. And then it was like on the car on the drive home that I was like. Oh, okay. I, now that's I got traumatizing. Oh, it's horrible. It's, like it's something, like, uh, it's something out of like curb your enthusiasm. It's Ridiculous. Like, it's, oh, it's like sure, swimming sure. with sharks. Yeah. Absurdist. Ab- absolutely. So, yeah. Did this? Did this person? This pro- problem person. <laughs> yeah. Even get me started. We'll find it. I'll tell yeah, you yeah, yeah. Just yeah. tell me her name, please. Um, no. Did I she? Won't. Did she? I know. I know. But did she? Did she know that you were having the eating disorder the year no. or two prior? No. No, okay. I was never open. I mean, my mom didn't even know at that Still point. Like, I was, I was, okay. I didn't talk. My mom didn't know until I was like later, later teens, almost an adult. I, I have not been open about that publicly until like maybe the last like year or so. Just because okay. I've gotten to the point now where I'm like, it's, it's only beneficial to be honest about those kind of things, you know, because that was mm-hmm. part of. Again, circling back to like the fear uh, and and not feeling like you can speak, it, it's there's such a fear and is- uh, in in debilitating in nature of feeling isolated and alone yes. in something, and so and and I feel like it's so detrimental to make people feel like something is so isolated within themselves, like they're the only person that ever goes through this, they're the only person that ever experiences this, and it's so not true, you know. And so that's where I got to a point where I was just like, you know. It, I, I, I don't have any vanity about talking about things like that. Like, who, who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, about, like, my own more, personal stuff. We're all a lot more alike than we are different, I think. And, like, mm-hmm. it is really, I think, um, encouraging that you would do that. Because now people can find solace in it, and hopefully it helps them, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious. So. When you are talking about empathy earlier, uh, Christy coined this term, I believe you coined it, of a narcissistic purgatory. Like that's kind of what Hollywood is, uh, yeah. which I, it's, I was like, fitting, wait, my boyfriends right? where my boyfriends live, my exes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just end it with that. Done. Perfect. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. The, like I had this thought and I'm curious to see what, what you think, because I relate sort of what you do to sort of to my 
it, in my head, it's very similar to my time in the Marines. High stress. It is. It's very A lot similar. of responsibility, you know, like this kind of stuff. And I have these two very different worlds, which are like a lot of my friends from my time in the military are like fascinated with what I do as a producer and all this stuff. Now they're like, wow, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, this place sucks most of the time. Not that it didn't suck doing that too. Different kind of suck, right? But <laughs> but the, the uh, it was also amazing um, at times. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> but, I know exactly what right? you mean. Right? But what, what I was going to say is that is something I, like, I guess there's just a little bit of a God pl- complex thing that happens when you pick up rank in the military. So I imagine mm-hmm. like what a surgeon would be like, but like what, um, no offense to all the amazing surgeons out there, but what I was I thought about is, transferring to surgery, that thing stops. <laughs> 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 the, uh, the, like LA has this, has this, you know, culture about it, like in Hollywood where in order to stand out, you need to be the center of the universe. And so if you have serving only yourself, serving yourself mm-hmm. and it's no yes. individual person's fault. In my opinion, right. it's a byproduct of the business. And what you get is a lot of people not listening. And like, I think it's extremely damaging, especially for children, in my opinion, um, mm-hmm. to, to be exposed to that at like a really young age, if you don't have good parenting. Right. But even as an adult, like, especially coming off, you know, the back of like a successful show, and then all of a sudden you're met with, holy shit, like it doesn't mean I'm guaranteed another job and no one gives a shit. You know, like I found in like in my 20s, L.A. to be a just that like, you know, you go to a restaurant and everyone else is looking at who else is walking in. Right. Yeah. And like, I'm just trying to sit here and shoot the shit. And I can't say I wasn't guilty of that sometimes. Oh, yeah. You get into you know, it. You, you become yeah. a part then of that's the what system. I mean. you obs- the long, you, unless you're like her, which is a unicorn. and. But you can you can become absorbed into it, and um, you know I think you know there came a point where I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, I, like this is not real life. This is stupid. I think you can have a healthy relationship to this business, make movies, and still be decent, and like encourage others to do the same. Well, I also what think I, what I saw you do was start to find your mentors that represented that versus yeah. the icons that were shoved down your throat in film school. Well, yeah. and you have to understand like. At one point, I was I was mentored by the most powerful person in media, like literally. So, mm-hmm. so for me, like my my bar. Do you want to say who that is? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> my bar. You're just trying to get everybody to name drop. <laughs> no tea. Will, we have no tea for the cut down. On I'll eventually get there when society kind of like you know fixes it. Yeah. And then they're able to yeah. just accept that. Lame. But um, we're. But for me, it was like a steep decline. It was like, oh, I started here. So that must mean everything goes like this. And it's just not reality, right? Yeah. What I was going to ask, long story short, is that sort of, is it really, like, I don't even know, I don't know if you experienced that same thing that I'm discussing, but like, is it, is it almost refreshing to, to like go into the hospital and do something? I think both jobs are meaningful, actually, but something that's objectively meaningful, like, and kind of get away it, from it's- that. Sometimes yes. Sometimes yes. Like I said before, the unfortunate byproduct, and I'm I'm sure, because there are a lot of parallels, I feel like, with, you know, firefighters, police officers, military, with nurses. Um, You do see a lot of flaws in the system itself. So, and also a byproduct, I feel like, of the pandemic is something, something broke in people. They got really selfish and and really self-serving um yeah and so that's made it that's made it difficult and and less rewarding to be honest and i'm not doing it for a thank you but when people are very expectant and they treat it you know like you're their cruise director rather than somebody who's there to take care of something that they really need help with that becomes a lot that becomes more challenging to have that feeling Mm -hmm. but having said that um I was talking to a, uh, a doc the other day and he, he said, you know, he goes, you know, it's a good shift if you can help one person, if you feel like you really made an impact to one person. Oh. And on one hand, I feel like that's not enough. And on the other hand, I feel like that's a good goal to feel like that. Uh, and then at the same time, there's a lot of impact that you do that you find out weeks later made an impact. But at the time you had no idea you made any kind of difference whatsoever. So are you at liberty to say an example per se? Well, an example of what? 
of the, of that like feeling like weeks later you found out that that made a difference. Yeah, I mean, I I've had I I've had patients that I I will just spend like an extra five minutes with or something. When I don't have that to spend, I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off. You know, the sky is falling, like that kind of feeling of trying to like balance a lot of different things. And I'll spend an extra five minutes just listening about something. And, you know, I, I had um, I had a friend of mine that worked up in the ICU where the, the patient ended up going and she she texted me and she was like, hey, did you have this guy? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, uh, I had him like a week ago. And she's like, yeah, he was just telling me about the nurse that he had done in the ER and how sh- sweet she was because he like sat and like you sat and talked to him about his daughter. That's and that he was so freaked out because he, he was a guy that like he he was in there and like I, I think it was last year and he had lung cancer. And so he was freaked out about being at the hospital because it was like during COVID and he had lung cancer and he was like really worried about that. And, and I just sat and I talked to him about his daughter and that got him distracted from being freaked out about being there. And and she just said that that made a big difference. And, and that's the kind of thing where it's like to me, I went home that shift and was like. God, did I even do anything? Did I help anybody? I don't know. Like, and, but then, you know, I had no idea the ripple effect. And the only reason I knew is because she texted me and told me that because of some like this- side statement he had said. So there's a lot of times that I feel like, and my mom reminds me of this too, that there's a lot of times that I'll do things and I may never know the good that it had. And I have to be okay with that. Um, but you know, so it, it, sometimes it is really rewarding, and then sometimes you go home and you feel like, did I even help anybody today? Mm-hmm. So it is kind of this – this, and, and there's a lot of limitations to how you can help people because of the red tape, because of, you know, the healthcare industry, and, and because of a lot of that. And so there are frustrations there too. Um, but, yeah, long story short, sometimes you go home and you're like, wow, that was a really rewarding day. And then sometimes you go home and you're like, wow, I just helped drunks and addicts for a few hours, mm-hmm. and they're going to go out and drink again and come back to the ER. Mm-hmm. So – yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a dichotomy of both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a, I have a two disparate questions to ask. One, <laughs> okay. does it, does it help like dealing with it? Cause I never had the perspective that you have of currently doing both things, right? There, there are different mm-hmm. times. Does it help like you with the inevitable, you know, rejection or waiting like of, you know, um, our business to, go into the hospital and have the high stakes environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I figured it. Okay. Yeah, um, it does. It, it's easier to not care if you get a project when you go in and, and there's more. I need to say it because like acting is really important to me. Um, mm. But I know in the grand scheme of things, like it's a movie, it's a television show, like life will go on. Interesting. Um, so going to the hospital, if I lose a job or something, yeah, it's heartbreaking in the moment. It always is. But it's a lot easier to move on when I go to the hospital and I see a lot. It gives me a lot more perspective. Right. And then my second question is, you probably get asked this a lot. Are there a ton of auditions for for hospital show? You know, uh, know, we've totally talked about this. Like, why is she not on the hospital? Yeah. Are they are they coming your way? And if not, who do I need to fucking call? <laughs> like, like at least to be like a, a consulting producer on a show. I like mean, they a, always have like, a really beautiful, sassy, redhead <laughs> that's causing trouble Are and you... hooking up. I know this sounds so weird and arbitrary, but I know the character on Grey's yeah, yeah, I know, I know and she too. has that hot boyfriend. Too. It's like, why are you? Is yeah. this happening? Are you getting? I, no, I get asked of... this. I get this asked this all the time. And I do feel I like it. Yeah. it is such a missed opportunity because I've had a few of them. It's funny because I've had a lot of the like, Chicago Fire, Chicago Med. Like I've had a lot of like those yeah. auditions um, lately, which inevitably have That's not gotten. Good. Which is which? No, it's good. <laughs> have ine- inevitably have not gotten, which is fine. You know, and I, like I said, There'll I'm a big Chicago believer. Florist soon. Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. My dad loves all of those shows. He watches all of them <laughs> except Med. Except Med, it's too bloody for him. Can't watch that. Okay. Like that, which is very <laughs> funny. Uh, he always passes out when he gets his blood drawn, which I make very much fun of him for. Um, but, um, so yeah, I've auditioned for them and it's funny because, you know, you talk, hear actors talk about like, oh, you know, I'll I'll say medical, medical, medical when I'm like rehearsing because it's so hard to like get all those terms down. Mm -hmm. It's very easy for me to memorize those lines because I say those words all day. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like there was like one layup for them to hire you. 
Mm. That's like, what, so it is. It is to me kind of a mis- market, but yeah, because it's, it's like the best kind of method research you can do. But and I had <laughs> I mean, some people asking one consulting producer actor. I've had people. I had people at work when I first started asking me if I was researching something. I had. I've had other people accuse me that it, I'm just like like going undercover for an acting job. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but like, it's so. I mean, I do feel like I do. F- feel like that would be the the logical like joining of the two but you know no nobody's been like knocking down my door for that i mean i'm on. sorry wait sorry who accused you of going undercover <laughs> Could you imagine? That's some LA narcissism right there. It was, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, some of it, some of it's been like social media comment nonsense. And that was like early on. Um, But also too, like when I started at the hospital, I never said anything that I was an actor. Because also too, how do you get that in a conversation? Hi, I'm Jennifer. I I was on a Disney show. Like what an a-hole. You know what I mean? Like who would do that? Like that's not, that's not a natural progression, you know? So yeah. I, I just never told anybody. And so like over time, like it would kind of like trickle in and people like, I showed, I showed this picture of like all of our coworkers together and my son saw it and he said, do you know who that is? And then it becomes this like snowball thing. So like even now, That's a fun like, way years, to do it though. To, but even years now into the job, I'll have people be like, why didn't you tell me this? And I'm like, and I literally will always say, how would I have told you that? And not sound like the biggest douchebag. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So so I think it was because of the fact that I just wasn't saying anything. And I kind of was like, there was like one coworker that was like, are you like kind of said it half joking. That was like, are you doing research for a job? Is that what this is? And uh-huh. I was like, yeah, uh-huh, I went to nursing uh-huh. school for two years and graduated. <laughs> hey, for talk a about job. fucking sure. method. Deep undercover. Yeah, look out, say, Jared Leto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what would be hilarious though? Is if you got, if you actually got on one of these shows as like this role and then you get, do it in real life and your patient comes up, he's like, what the fuck? And he thinks like, <laughs> a TV doctor is our TV nerd. That would be so meta. I need you know, to see that. I, I had one of, people ask me all the time if like patients recognize me and they do sometimes. One of my favorites though, talking about like meta and like messing with their brains. I had this girl that, and this doesn't like violate HIPAA because I'm not mentioning names or anything, but um, which HIPAA is like patient protection and all that kind of thing. Yep. Oh yes. But, um, but anyway, so she, <laughs> she came in and she had like, because we're right by Universal Studios, so we get all the like, oh, I went on this roller coaster, vomited my brains out, now I'm here. Um, so, um, <laughs> but we do all the time. Um, so she, <laughs> I guess she'd done a bunch of edibles and like a bunch of like, she'd done edibles and like two other kind of drugs on top of it. So she was high as a kite and then went to Universal <laughs> and like they were like, absolutely not. And then like called 911 and got her to the ER. So I, she was my patient and I was taking care of her and she looked at me like this and she goes, she was like, he, so she was like, she thought she was tripping balls. But she was like, and she, but she was like, it took her a second. She was like, you were on that magic show, right? And I was like, no, that's not me. And, she, and, and I, was just, just, I just was like, no, that's not me. And she goes, really? She goes, you look just like her. And I was like, no, it's, it's not me. She goes, like she was, she was processing so many things. This is was, the TikTok. We're cutting this down and yeah, putting this on TikTok. Yeah. Like it was, weird. it was, it was so, I mean, I've had so many weird patient encounters where like they've recognized me. And sometimes like if it's an appropriate moment, I'll say, I'll cop to it and be like, yeah, that was me, you know? And, and it's uh-huh. nice because they're having a bad day and it's something that makes them smile. So that's really nice. But that one was like, she's high as a kite. She's not going to remember any of this. I'm just <laughs> That is say no. fucking hilarious. But it was so, job, because Jeff. she never let it go. She, for the whole time I had her, she wouldn't let it go. She just was like kept looking at me like I was like some kind of like alien creature. Like she, <laughs> oh, yeah, she was tripping. Her balls. eyes were popping I, I out of her head. Right. Yeah, like she, I, she was so high, and I don't know if she remembers uh, that or she probably just thought TikTok, she was like, I got do so your high. Thing. Yeah, she probably just thought I was so high. I thought yeah. I saw a Harper from Wizards, but I, oh, I you know, <laughs> but yeah, um, it was ridiculous. Okay, I want to know what, what are you doing ten years from now in an ideal world? Five oh, years, geez. ten Where's, years Yeah, sure. And where and <laughs> well, where is and, the state of the world? Please tell me. Oh, God, I have no, no darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, don't you realize at any crucial point in my life, I'm going to call you. That's going to be <laughs> no, that's it. Fine. I'm going to text that's you fine. in the middle of the night. What's going on with this Ukraine I, it's situation, totally Jennifer? Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> it was during the middle of the night, too, if I remember correctly. I remember, like, going to bed girl. and, like... Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember like it, like I was going to bed, like getting ready to go to sleep, and I get this like text, and I was like, "Why is Christy texting me? This is really weird." And she's like, "The sky is falling. What's going on?" And I was like, "It's fine. It's okay." Um, yeah, pretty but, much. Uh, pretty much. But as far as ten years from now, I don't know, man. I mean, if you had asked me, if you had told me when I was nineteen that this would where I would be now, I would have been like, I would have been like the girl in the ER tripping balls. I would have been like, hell no. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, cause remember when I was 19, 18, I thought I was going to do my free form and ABC show. So <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. So that's we the thing is like, did. I have, yeah. right. Like, so, I mean, we all have that like weird, uh, like whatever. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, and I've had those moments too, where I'm like, wait, where, how did I get here? But, um, but yeah, so I don't know, man. Like I, I, I would love to say what I want to happen in the next 10 years. I would love to be able to make my money from acting and then be able to use the nursing with things like Doctors Without Borders and like really being able to use it for like diabetes advocacy, making sure insulin's affordable. Like that's something that I would really love to use the nursing for. Um, but then again, like I said, it, it's a, it's something that would have to, a lot of things would have to happen for me to be able to, you know, support myself and still be able to do that. So I would love to be able to find, you know, um, a greater balance of, of acting full time and then nursing, um, where I really felt like I could be more impactful. Um, I feel like I'm impactful now, but I feel like there is always a way to be more so. Okay. Wait, what? where do we find you? Yeah. So obviously TikTok. <laughs> He's like, focus. So yeah, <laughs> TikTok. Uh, um, it's just Jennifer Stone on Instagram and then Jennifer L. Stone, I believe on TikTok. Okay. So, what is and the then guy my Twitter who, is not my name as well. Not oh, to be confused with Jennifer H. Stone, which is my character on Kid Kelly. Oh, that's which, right. You that. were Jennifer Stone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your character. I think it was Jennifer H. Stone. Um, okay. You're on the right so, track. Dick Wolf, this is for you. <laughs> Just fucking do it, dude. I mean, like, yeah. it's so easy. Yeah. And it makes so much sense. Yeah. So just, you know, fucking do it. Okay. Dick, I feel I, like that would be I feel like that would be the perfect life's and God's sense of humor for me to end up on a medical show. But who knows? We'll see. I mean, it would be awesome. And then 25 seasons of that shit. You're making like <laughs> Ellen Pompeo 30 million dollars a year. Oh, my gosh, like, geez. that's the move. Wait, Jen, do you do like fun TikTok comedy about like as if you were on a show? Because I feel like that's a funny series you could do on TikTok that might get you. This is almost a side of this podcast but like yeah like if she, she's if, giving you the it's tips, almost like uh, well no but with tiktok it's like if you do something sometimes it helps out create true people's perceptions of you and it's almost like you can lean into the fact that she's like not on the show kind of thing I i've seen like some of yours they're funny you yeah know, you do you i do. appreciate that yeah yeah I, but you're trying to say like more nursing stuff is what you're yeah saying? yeah yeah to make people realize how like if you were on the show or if your character was actually oh, in an ER nurse from yeah. wizards, you know, yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, that's a good idea. I, I'm still figuring out TikTok to be honest. I think a lot of mine yeah. are just like a we sardonic are. viewpoint of filters. <laughs> and like, whenever they do those, like <laughs> who would I date, you know, or like smash or pass, oh, oh, like smash or pass. Yeah. I, I think I've done like three of those and everybody is like, always gotten really involved and I'm just like I don't know why we're so excited about like smash or pass like Sully from Monsters Inc like I don't understand why that's like you'd so smash you smash him you would though. never be with the Sully you would never no, smash no because I'm not a pass you wouldn't not smash a furry Sully. move on pass. oh you don't want to smash um, pass Sully? Oh. No, I'm not. I'm are not a furry. It's not my scene. Are you cheating on me with Sully? There's a lot. There's a lot. Sully there's a lot being you. revealed. Good man. Right Oh, John Goodman, yeah. maybe. Cross Sully. this line. You really? do not. Okay. Well, just uh, act, actor, smash. Smash. John actor smash. Actor smash. Actor smash. Actor yeah. smash. Actor smash. Artist, artist, yeah. actor smash, smash. Not real life. Smash. I mean, who doesn't want to Not real life smash. smash. There's a big you difference between. John. Yeah, there's a big difference between actor <laughs> smash and and real smash. No actor smash. Yes. No actor smash. No actor smash. Smacker smash. <laughs> Schmutch my well schmuck to you soon. I love it. I love it. We love oh you so God. much. Jennifer Stone, you thank you for too. being on Vulnerable. And we are rooting for you. All right, Jen, Stay we love safe. you. Stay love safe, you of course. And, uh, and I'll text well. you at 2 a.m., okay? Yeah, so exactly. do it. Text, that text me all of your medical questions. We miss you. We hope to see you soon. 